John Wooden remains an icon. Yes, he was a coach who won a lot. But it is his philosophy of leading with values and of course, the pyramid of success that are two of his lasting contributions to our society. I knew John Wood, and I can think of no more meaningful way to honor his legacy than to shine a bright light on those who would follow in his footsteps, the John Wooden Fellows. These students are destined to do well by doing good, and they will be the leaders that inspire the leaders that are next in line, just like John Wooden. Hey, Ryan. Welcome to the United States. It's really great to meet you. Let's catch up in the car. So I grew up in Singapore. I came from a middle-class family. As much as I wanted to study overseas, I could never afford it. And as John Wooden said, you know, do your very best. And I did that, fortunate enough to be offered a scholarship from the Singapore government. And the deal was, you know, they'll pay for four years of my education and I'd serve for six back home. So I was an active duty officer in the Armour Corps in the Army. In the military, you learn a lot about uh, servant leadership and authenticity as a leader. When you lead such a diverse group of people and you want to bond them together in pursuit of a common mission, the military is a great place to learn such skills and qualities. So what are your takeaways as a leader from all of that? Listen and seek to understand rather than be understood. As a leader, you have to lead by example and always put in the best and put in the most. So you also work in addition to your commitment in the military. I actually am the head of mergers and acquisitions for Starhub, which is Singapore's second largest telecommunications company. I also serve on the audit committee of Dover Park Hospice, which is a non-profit hospice in Singapore. You know, I think I'm privileged to be placed in these leadership positions mm -hmm. and I like to think of it as paying it back at the same time I paid for it for the next generation of leaders. Well, hello there. Congratulations. Thank you so much. I'd really like to know a lot more about kind of how you got here. Well, let's just kind of walk right on over here Great. and see what, see what we can learn. So over the course of my career, I've worked for various nonprofit organizations. Back in 2010, I joined the U.S. Peace Corps and served in Western Ukraine. I helped start a leadership camp for kids who are HIV positive. I was able to help these kids feel comfortable that they also too could live outside of their comfort zone despite living with this virus. Most recently, I was working as a manager at the UCLA Blum Center on Poverty and Health in Latin America. Prior to that, I was working at the UCLA Arthur Ashe Student Health and Wellness Center where I oversaw the pharmacy relocation project. Wow, Jessica, that's a lot of doing good. Where did all of that come from? I grew up in a family that was really dedicated to service. Together as a family, we would all volunteer at an orphanage in Mexico every month. I was really interested in coming to business school because of the fact that Anderson was Really promotes global leaders. Coaches, pyramids of success is integrated into the curriculum. That's something that's really important to me. And I really needed that for-profit experience, which I've been able to get here at Anderson. I currently work for two organizations, the first being Full Screen Media, which I help their HR department strategize how they're going to implement their 2019 health and wellness programming. The other organization I work for is a health tech startup called Well Start Health. They're focused on utilizing telemedicine to help prevent, and in some cases, reverse chronic diseases. Come on in. Good afternoon, Dean Osborne, Jerry Sims. Congratulations on all your accomplishments. Thank you very much. Let's sit down right over here. Absolutely. Jerry, I understand that you and John Wooden have something in common. Coach and I are both Hoosiers. We're both from Indiana. I was playing basketball in high school, and he was a natural role model. Also, both went to Purdue University. I really got involved in leadership opportunities there with campus organizations and student groups, and that kind of led me to the job that I had after school, which was working with entrepreneurs and business leaders within the state of Indiana. I was in the Marine Corps for about five and a half years. One of my biggest leadership experiences was in Afghanistan. One of my main missions there was to ensure strong relationships and build relationships with Afghani village elders. 
Where is uh, Coach Wooden's influence in how you do this? Right as I was joining the, the Marine Corps and about to be in charge of my first Marines, I had read Wooden's book on leadership. No kidding. Absolutely, and John Wooden believed in servant leadership and he wrote about loving his, his teammates and like serving um, with a sense of purpose and a sense of love and enthusiasm and all that you do. Jerry, I am very impressed with what you've been able to accomplish, but what's next? I'm very active with organizations like Team Rubicon and Service to School and the American Legion. I'm a reservist still in the Marine Corps. Right now, an area that I've always been called to and an area where I could have impact is in diplomacy. That's an area, especially now, where leaders are needed the most. That would be really a great way for you to cap off your career. Hello, Leah. I'm Al Osborne. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Really great to meet you. I want to learn everything about you. Can we sit down? Yeah. All right. Tell me a little bit about your story. I had my son two weeks after I graduated high school, and then at the same time my sister was diagnosed with terminal cancer. So I was balancing my days with work, with school, and helping out with her three boys. That's a lot for someone who wasn't even 20. And after I graduated Berkeley, I knew I wanted to pursue my master's in public health and came to UCLA. I started the Reproductive Health Interest Group and was lucky to do my internship in Guatemala. So my son went to school there and accompanied me to all the clinics. So after I got my MPH, I worked for UC San Francisco for 10 years in critical work that really helped reduce the teen birth rate in California. Tell me how you got here to Kaiser Permanente. I knew I wanted to work for Kaiser for many years, and now I work on the flu vaccination campaign here in West LA. Much like teen pregnancy, the flu vaccination is controversial. 80,000 Americans died from the flu last year. Most of those people were not vaccinated. When we look at who gets the flu shot and who doesn't, we see a large disparity between whites and blacks. We know that distrust, and also just not thinking that the flu is a big deal, is very important. How does Coach Wooden fit into your view of the world? Coach Wooden always did the right thing, and he held others to that standard as well. For me, as a mother, in the community, and here at Kaiser Permanente, I return to school, and I'm getting my MBA, both to complement my public health knowledge, but also to launch a company called Bump to Bundle. It's like wedding planning for pregnancy and parenting. Speaking of motherhood, where is your son now? I really couldn't be more proud of who he's become. He's getting his master's in biomedical engineering now. We're gonna graduate a week apart. My mom really is my role model. The fact that she was able to both get me to where I am today and achieve her own goals is really impressive. She really is my superhero. It's a real achievement to be a John Wooden Fellow. Thank you. I'm honored. Congratulations. It's the right stuff. Thank you very much, Dean Osborne. It's a pleasure. Congratulations on being a Wooden Fellow. Thank you. It's such an honor. And this has been a truly wonderful experience. Let's go do it. All right. <laughs>